February 9th, 2002. Let that date go down in musical history. If you're unfamiliar with the Rodney sound, then before we begin, you need to know the day the music was born. The Rodneys, creators of the Marcy Avenue beat. A bit about me. My name is William D. Kappemeyer, and I was a 49-year-old stockbroker until my daughter Amy turned me on to a new sound. I didn't know they made music like this anymore, with songs like Step Off and Groovy People, Groovy Places. It put me in a state of mind when dropping out was a good thing. And that's why I'm here in Brooklyn, to share with you the knowledge of the band that changed the world or at least the neighborhood, and maybe even get them back together. Because we, we love, love Rodney. the Rodney! Yo, Rodney, we about to jump on this. You best get moving. You feel me, man? Let's do it then. Let's go. One, two, three, four. Groovy people, groovy places, hanging out with strung out cases. Living life out loud in harmony Sitting on a stoop Drinking a cold one Chatting with my friends on a Monday tell you about the Rodneys, and this is all I'm going to say about it. When I retired from the Corps, I decided to open up a little cleaning business. About a year after that, after my wife passed on to her greater glory, when I had a few extra hours to kill after work, I decided to go into the entertainment business on the managerial end. That's how I met the Rodneys. Yeah, I could tell they came from good stock but they needed someone like me to mold them, keep them in line, make sure their shoes would shine. The Rodneys was the group, boy. I know. They could have been big, but Classic they, had, but they had broke up. Classic hits. How can you, know. how can you, not? It's no greater music than that. You, it can't get no better than that. It doesn't get much better than that. No. I wish they'd come back together though. Never. Ball were for players, the Rodney. Remember when they had the wigs and everything? No, that man. whole thing was just tight. It was, it was nothing like the Rodneys. Boy. It was nothing better than that, nothing. I like, I, I used to want to do it. For Halloween, I was one of them. Groovy people, groovy places, stretching about empty spaces, clinging to a life that's fancy free. They are young hip hop performers, got no discipline. They dress like a bunch of ragamuffins. And that's a sad commentary on this nation. Now back in the 60s and 70s, all the musical groups wore suits. They kept up in the street decor. They were spit and polish operations you were proud to be a fan of. And if you watch some of the old Motown groups, now I'm talking about people like the Temptations, the Four Tops, the Pips and the OJs. When you look at the military precision and cadence of their dance steps, that ain't no accident. And I can guarantee you that each and every one of those band members came out of the United States Marine Corps. The hip hop was the only thing, the only downfall I think really had. Yeah. These cats used to be up these index cards, man. I, don't, I wasn't really feeling it. Nah, yeah, man. Yeah, I remember them fools trying to get on stage to bust out their rhymes and shit, but the boss wasn't having it. But I give them their props. It was pretty persistent. Yo, Ski. Yeah, what's up? You remember the Rodneys? 
Those them psychedelic niggas, right? Mm. Dressing up all Edwardian and shit. Yes, yeah, but before that, it went to the P. Diddy, Jay-Z tip, you know? Yeah, but we threw him out the club a couple of times, you yeah. know? Ain't having it. Just yeah, ain't having it. Too. Yo, dog, where you gonna let us up in this piece, huh? When you step in line and pay. This is bull, man. Yo, why don't you guys show some character, man? Show some class, man. That's that. We ain't here to see your show. We want to spit our lyrics. Look, Club Legacy don't run no amateur night. You want to kick your little f***ing rhymes, do it in front of your mirror at home. You don't know who you with. Yo, don't the fuck you. Yo, step to it then. All right, all right. Yo, we be back because we got something to say. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, we be here. And Rodney Barnett and John Rodney did go back. And this is what they had to say. The earliest known recordings of the Rodneys, or as they were known at the time, the 106th Street Road crew. Check them out. Hip hop and grooviness, I think. Word to your mother, Rodney. I'm sitting and talking to the parents of Rodney Barnett, Sarah and Rodney Sr., here in the kitchen of their apartment at 2934 Bushwick Avenue. Mrs. Barnett, do you remember that fateful February night when your son Rodney and John came home all disappointed and upset from Club Legacy? Oh, yes. They were down because the performance hadn't gone well. I felt so badly for them. Who knows what would have happened if they had become successful rappers? Well, if they had, I would not be sitting here right now. Mr. Barnett, what are your recollections? Rodney was determined to make something for his life. You see, we instilled in him a sense of going for his dream. If one door is closed, you find the next. The next door closed, you go to the next. If that door closed, you go to the next and to the How next. How many doors you gonna close on this boy? All I know is he wasn't making no headway in his chosen profession. Word, man. What's up, man? It's time for playing. No, you mean plan Z. Whatever, Yo, what's up, little brother? What's going on, man? How you doing? Yo, so you still burning that wax? You know, I'm down here digging in the crease. Word, know? what you got, man? Yo, you know, um, Mr. Gray? Yeah, what's from up, down with the block? Yeah. Yeah, man, he moved, man. Word? And he, yeah, he moved to Jersey and he gave me some hot shit from back in the day. Yo, that's a cool brother. Yo, no doubt. Matter of fact, check that um, crate over there. He's got some hot shit in there. Right. Word? No doubt. Yo, matter of fact, yo, what's up? Shit. Check this shit out. Yo, this Earth, Wind, and Fire shit has been sampled to death, man. So, this shit is whack. So what? This shit is still hot from back in the days, man. You gotta listen to the lyrics, man. Gotta get you back. What you gotta do life. is get us some shit ain't nobody heard before. Oh, yo, son, this is it. I got it. What's up? The Beatles. Let's sample the Beatles. The Beatles? The Beatles is whack, man. What are you talking about, man? The Beatles is hot, man. Paul McCartney's still doing his live shit, even today. And guess who got smoked on the streets long before Biggie and Tupac even thought about it? Mm. John Lennon, that's who. And you want to know some more gangster shit? Check this out. Revolver? Now tell me the Beatles wasn't on top of hip-hop with a title like that. Yo, little B, put this shit on. I mean, with a title like that, they probably even talking about clapping niggas and shit. Word? Let me hear this. Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling this. This is hot. I could definitely work with this. Check this out, yeah, B. I thought you would. Pass that. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The Beatles be keeping yeah. it real, man. The tax man ain't no joke. Yo, little B, you think you could sample this album for us? 
What you want me to do with this, man? Yo, this is gonna be our new sound. Pump up the volume reggae style. Make that snare drum pop. We could definitely work with this. You gonna rap to the fucking Beatles? Yo, we got a show coming up next Thursday. We gotta take this to another level. We do this right, we definitely gonna meet some serious freaks. Yeah, buddy, you know Work. I'm always down with that. Yo, What's I just up? thought about something. What up? You know that brother down the hall from me? You mean Rodney? Yeah, man, he always be into that classical music like the Beatles. Yo, you think he might have some more albums that we could sample? That's what I'm talking about. Yo, let's go. Yo, I love you, but I got to go. Just up the stairs from the Barnett's flat, a young Rodney York lived with his father, Billy. Billy, a sometime blues guitarist. Oh, hi. Come on in. Peace so along. You know, music's a funny thing. It gets into your soul before your brain has a chance to process it. It was that way for me. It was that way for Rodney. Rodney loved good music no matter who did it. Charlie Parker, Nat Cole, Miles, Train. The strawberry alarm clock. You ass givers is crazy. What? what nigga? First off, the Beatles don't even own the copyrights for their own music. Michael Jackson does. He don't give up no copyrights to nobody. There's some serious shutters involved. <laughs> These are also hip hop funkies who want to sample their beats. What? Let me tell you something. We got a show on Thursday, and it's all laid out. Not with no Beatles shit, it ain't, I'll tell you that much. What the hell are we supposed to do now? Yo, I guess we gotta go back to the old shit, man. What the hell wrong with you? That shit didn't work the last time. Yo, we could take this. Take what? The Beatles? Yo, it ain't like they never took anything from us. Everybody knows the Beatles was into that Chuck Berry and that little Richard shit. Yeah, but you heard the man. Might be suing niggas trying to jack his beats. I'm not talking about stealing the Beatles. Then what you talking about? I'm talking about what they took from us, we'll take back. So you trying to say what, we just gonna pin our own songs? Now you talking B? Now how the hell are we supposed to do that? Look around you where we be. Hold up, hold up. I'm sitting here listening to you brothers talk. Let me ask you about something. What? Do y'all even know the hard work and determination that it takes to be a musician? You just can't say shit and make it so. Well, let me tell you something. I got the lyrics, I got the music, and I got the message. All you got to do is lay it to some sweet tunes and bang, we out of here. Right, we'll That's see. what I'm talking about. All right, we'll see. Yo, Rodney, what CDs you buy? Kings and Stones. Ooh. Biggie and Boom. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. All right. From this point on, the sound of a new generation would be born. Bring me the A5 and my to the widow next door. She been married seven times before and everybody was a Henry. Never had a Willie or Sam. Yes, I'm the A for Henry. Henry the A I am. Hey brother, you know where I can get an inexpensive guitar from? I bet you get a whole lot of ladies playing that thing, huh? Herman and the Hermits. Nah, man, I'm telling you, it was Freddy and the Dreamers. Nah, man, it was Herman and the Hermits. I'm telling you now, man, it was Freddy and the Dreamers. You can't tell me that. I just bought the song last week. You're on crack. That may be so, but I know who did the song. I'm telling you now, it was Freddy uh, and the yeah, Dreamers. To the widow it was next Herman door. And the She's been married seven times before, and everybody was a Henry. Never wedded with you or Sam. I'm an eighth old man, I'm Henry. Henry the A fire. You see the boys downstairs? You mean Rodney Barnett and John Rodney? They got no musical talent. I mean, that Barrett boy was bright. 
I mean, don't get me wrong, boy could rhyme himself some lyrics, but it took Rodney to put the music to the words. Didn't your son teach John Rodney the bass? He taught him a few things enough for him to play those three chord changes. And such songs as Semantics and Step Off. And don't forget, I was the one who introduced the fellas to Drew Underhill. The band's very first drummer. I wish I knew he was a crackhead at the time. Don't put that in the film. Okay, uh, cut that! On second thought, leave it in. The boy okay. should be shamed of himself. It's true. John Rodney, Rodney York, and Rodney Barnett did not know anyone who played live drums, which in the inner city had become about as rare an art form as calligraphy. But it was right here that a young man actually had studied percussion. And to sweeten the deal, Drew Underhill had his own basement recording studio. For you Rodneyophiles, it was here that the first demos were made. Songs like Groovy People, Groovy Places, and Step Off first saw the light of day right here. And of course, G. Mac Robinson Caldwell. G. Mac Robinson Caldwell always had a new son. Year by year they were drifting from age 19 down to one. G. Mac Robinson Caldwell As we've said before, things did not go well for Drew Underhill. So we thought it would be interesting to find out what happened to the one-time Rodney now that he's finally out of rehab. Um, of course, the band had to let Drew go because of creative differences and uh, the theft of uh, Rodney York's guitar, uh, Rodney Barnett's watch, um, John Rodney's bass and his mother's silverware and fine jewelry. Uh, we don't want to defame anyone. Let's just say Drew Underhill was yet another casualty of rock and roll. Bad thing drugs are. Nobody's home. Where is this guy? What are you doing? Don't touch me, man. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I got fan club immunity, man. Vice president of the Forest Hills chapter of the Rodney family. Don't touch me. You're going to be in trouble, man. I'm on board. I'm talking about Drew. Drew Underhill, man. I love you, man. Are you in contact with any of the other Rodneys? Are you guys still friends? Okay. Drew. Drew. Are you going to get back together with the band? Drew. If you do get back together with the Rodneys, are they going to use you on a part time basis? It perhaps gives you a smaller share of the royalties on future earnings. Hey, hey, Drew, I love you, hey, man. Hey, get out of here. Drew Underhill. Get out of here. I love you, man. Free Drew Underhill. Free Drew Underhill. Free Drew Underhill. Woman ain't got any back. Mama make me easy. Your music back. Drew Underhill. So my get.
of Drew Underhill, the Rodneys had a void to fill, so they came to this garage here, all the way over in Corona, Queens, just to find another drummer willing to play with them. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to be sitting and talking to that drummer, Mr. Rodney Modney Walcott. Rodney, how is it you came to play the drums? I was in the Marine Corps Fife and Drum Band. That's how it started. And that would be when? I got my honorable discharge in January 2002. Mm -hmm. And only a month later, you're playing with a psychedelic band? Now, how on earth did that happen? Well, I have to thank my old drill instructor, Roy Sweet Bailey. Ah, that's a name we all recognize, don't we? Yeah, well, Sweet called me up and told me that he saw this band. Let's hear it for the Rodneys. Well, we have another superb great act that needs no introduction. Put your hands together for Pablo and Luis. Word, man. Damn. You up next. Do it. You're up next. Do it. I'm gonna help you guys. There's someone you have to meet. An old Marine Corps buddy of mine, Sweet Bailey. Fellas, take my advice. Follow this guy. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I am Pablo, and this is Louis. Now, I saw what you fellas did out there. Now, I think you got balls playing that British shit. Now, I think I can do something with you. Yeah, who the hell is you? Your manager, Holmes. Who said we need a manager? All them people out there booing said so. And you manage groups? No, I own the dry cleaner. Then who said you can manage? I did, motherfucker. What did you do? All right, all right. Damn. Did you make love to your lady? <laughs> now, I understand I'm a businessman. I goes where I see opportunity. I see lettuce. That makes me a salad. I see a cow. I make me some patent leather shoes. And that's what I'm going to do with you. But in order for this to work, you got to follow orders. Oh, we got a problem. Do you hear me? I can't hear you, sir! All right. Now, the first thing I say is this crackhead got to go. We're going to keep it clean in this outfit. We're going to be like, like Jimi Hendrix, like Joan Armatrotti, like uh, Lenny Kravitz. And all them other fools white folks like. If we play this shit right, we gonna take it straight on to the top. I need this dress dry clean and altered. Dry clean, 
altar. I need the hem shortened two inches. Taper the sides an inch on each side. Seated. Each side. And one belt loop. One. And I need it by Friday. Friday? No problem. You got it. <laughs> You got everything? Oh, yes, ma'am. I think I can handle it for you. Next Friday. Next Friday. Yeah. OK. I came for the dress that I had altered and dry cleaned for last week. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. What dress was that? The dress that I had hem and tapered and a belt loop. Oh, uh, oh, why don't you come back next Friday and we'll see what we can do? No, 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 no. It was supposed to have been ready. Last Friday. Last Friday? Ma'am, I thought you meant this Friday. No, Sweet. no, no. Uh, does this look all right? I, when it came down to it, Sweet would do anything for the band. He'd give us the shirt off his back. Or at least his customer's back. As matter of factly, he wouldn't take no for an answer. No other band would have gone back after they got booed off the stage at Club Legacy. But that night, there we were. Pack stage with Sweet. You think you're gonna come to my club? Tell me you're gonna put on my stage! I don't think so! So it's like that, yo. Now look, we doing you a favor by letting us take your floor. Look, I got news for you. People gonna be eating this shit up. What you need to do is take these son of bitches to the circus, man. That's where they belong, nothing but a bunch of clowns. So uh, you ain't gonna let them take your floor. You speak English? <laughs> you damn right I do. So listen to this. Pay the house mixer and get out there and take the stage. So Sweet kept negotiating the business while we played the set. Didn't I tell you to clap? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, uh huh. Clap, clap, Don't make me come over there. All right, yeah, yeah. Put them together, yeah! Uh-huh, yes! Uh -huh. You could say no to Sweet, but if you did, it was probably the last thing you said for about three to six weeks. Take the second amateur show we played. This time the prize was for $1,000, and Sweet was determined that we were gonna win. And he was not about to let that ventriloquist and dummy act beat us out a second time. Now, you ain't as funny as you think you is, Pedro. Pablo. Not with them corny jokes. I don't understand. Now, you need to lighten up. Chill that shit out. Do you hear me? Take your ass back to El Barrio, where they appreciate that humor. Yeah, take your ass back to San Juan. Just keep it off the stage tonight. How would you like for me to kick your ass, stupid old? What you say? Louis, I told you, if you're going to speak Spanish, speak properly. The word is estupido. But don't say that to him, Louis. Don't let me come over there. My friend, my friend, talk to me. Don't talk to him. And tell that faggot to keep his mouth shut. He's a naughty little boy. Pay him no mind. Now look, I ain't no cheapskate neither. I'll give you $150 right here and now for you to take a walk. Anybody ever tell you you smell like a homeless person's ass? Keep it up and I'm gonna hurt you. <laughs> my friend, my friend. Is it, how, how can I help you? Is there anything I could do for you? I'm managing this group over here. And I'm going to do whatever it takes for them to win this contest. You name your price. Why don't you go on stage and fart for the audience? Maybe they beg for mercy. <laughs> That's it. No, wait. No, I... no, he's only kidding. You want to talk shit? No, no, no take wait. He's, he's only... Oh, what stinky breath you have. <laughs> what? No, no, no. 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 You sonny kitty! He was joking with you! He's a crazy! That's what happens you when you fuck with people! No, you talk to me, Louis! <laughs> talk to me, Louis! Bailey! I'm gonna get you, Bailey! I swear! I'm gonna get you! I'm gonna get you! Louis, I'm gonna get you! This Bailey thinks she's gonna come in here and bitch slap me like this and get away with it? I don't think so, man. Ooh. Where I come from, and you know what I'm talking about, fellas. We hit a shit a different level here. 
damn straight. We call the police! So how do you feel about it today? I miss Sweet Man, because he was the guy that made the Rodneys what they were. The greatest rock band in the history of the world, and that's a fact. Word, money. Rodney's met with little success at either hip-hop or rock clubs, Sweet Bailey thought they might appeal to a younger generation. And as it just so happened at the very same time, the New York City Board of Education needed a boost for its creative after-school programs. It was a marriage made in heaven. Rodney Mania had at last arrived, and it wore plaid skirts, it carried book bags, and it had to be in bed by 9.30. I was the one who decided the after-school program could use some excitement. And being something of a music fan, I thought the Rodneys were the perfect choice to entertain our kids. Clean cut, honest, well-mannered. Needless to say, it was a big success. Step up! Step up! Step up! Step up! I love the Rodneys. They're groovy. I love John Rodney. He's the cute one. I love all the Rodney songs. My favorite ones, Groovy People, Groovy Places. I wish the Rodneys were playing in my school every day. The Rodneys are the greatest. And that was my entree to the Rodneys. It was the summer of 2002. And once I heard them, my life changed forever. you know that music like that can't be bought in stores? What is going on in here? He's looking through all my stuff. I am not. You are too. Oh, okay, I'm just looking for a tape, that's oh, all. Oh, William. Look, we can call Grace, right? Do you have Grace's phone number? You're not calling anyone at this hour. You don't know this kid, Grace. She'll, she'll take the tape, she'll break it, she'll sell it, she'll give it away. We gotta get the tape back tonight, gang. William, William. the Rodneys will play at Amy's school again, and we'll get you another tape. How do you know this? Do you do you book the Rodneys? No, of course then not. Then shut up! William, you're becoming obsessed with this whole thing! <laughs> and that's right, you are. I, I just want to hear a little, little music. I just want to hear a little of that music. Step off. I like repeat people, movie places. The Rodneys, Come on, let's put these quarterly reports. They suck. Uh, I'm working on them right now, sir. Rewriting. Yeah, I can see you're rewriting them right now. I'm going to have them printed in the morning, sir. The last show at PS122, Rodney was greeted by screaming fans. Couldn't get enough of their mod music. Hmm. Call me Kappelmeyer. Back in the 60s, when I was protesting the war, proving to the rascals, and getting laid three times a day, never in my wildest hallucinations, did I picture myself crunching numbers for a brokerage house or living the soulless suburban lifestyle of my hated father. 
The world is completely out of control when a guy like me starts laughing at Howard Stern jokes and involuntarily nods in agreement with a Rush Limbaugh opinion. When I find myself joining the bridge club, when I'm holding a dry, fizzy cocktail at a reception thrown by my boss, then it's high time to drop out of society again. Yes. Okay, thank you. He disappeared about two months ago, and nobody's been able to get in contact with him, and we need to. There's an issue of a half a million dollars of bearer bonds missing from the Diamond Trust Fund. We feel that Mr. Kalpamar is the only person who can find out what happened to this money. If you happen to run across him, please tell him we need to get in touch with him as soon as possible. Would you? Once I discovered the Rodneys, uh, there was no going back to my old life. Quite naturally, I quit my job, I left my family, and I dedicated my life to this. You can enjoy children's play. Watch the adults on their way To the subway to work You can find them on my blog On my blog Kennedy Fry has just closed It's a Rias in repose But the bodega stays open steps today. Not interviewed since he left the Rodneys, John Rodney has moved on to other projects. Like this housing project here. Hey, well, hey, leave the work zone. You can't be here. I'm here to see one of your workers, Who? sir. Him! Hey, what, you clear what agency are you guys from? Rodney! John Rodney! What is this? I'm William D. Kappelmeyer. I'm the number one foremost authority on the Rodneys. Here's my fan club badge. Yo, man, don't you see I'm working here? Yeah, I just want to talk to you for a few minutes about, you know, your former bandmates, the Rodney's. Yo, man, get out of here with that bullshit, man. Don't you see I'm working? Hey, Rodney, is this guy a friend of yours? No, sir. Then get him a helmet or get him out of here. Man, what's the matter with you? I just got this gig. Are you in touch at all with uh, Rodney Barnett? Oh, man, please. Hey, what happened? Guys. I mean, is there even a, a, a chance in hell that the band might get back together Man, again? Man, would you just step off? Step off! As if I told you once or twice to stay in the wet me. No. Hey, hey, why is it every temperamental rock star has his sick old fans doing dirty work? Thanks, Rodney! Hey, now your fans will see why Rodney Barnett called you difficult! Hey, I'm walking here! I'm walking here! Yeah. Well, it's... It's easy to understand why John Rodney would have an aversion to talking about or being pinned down about a band reunion. It's much harder to understand why you would still not be on speaking terms with Rodney Barnett. After all, the two of them went to grade school together. The two of them formed perhaps the greatest musical group in the history of the world, the Rodneys, and 
The Rodney's music was about peace, love, understanding. It wasn't about building high-rise apartments. Spit shine of Cuban boots. Unbutton that paisley shirt. Clean that dicky. Comb that pudding bowl hair. Where are your granny glasses, son? Here, yes, sir. It was the beginning of June when things took a dramatic turn for the worse for the band. It was an incident now known as the Penguin Walk Controversy. Everybody outside, ice has formed on the ground. The howling wind is the sound that makes everybody hide. Everybody beware, funny look in the sky. It's snowing Eskimo pies. Be careful of polar bears. The parrot talks, the ducky squawks. Soaring hawk and the penguin walks like this. All you penguins with style, wear your finest tails. Too much of you can be no more rotten is up under my roof. I saw that foolishness they call it the penguin people, or whatever you want to call it. Grown men up there acting the fool. Beware. Of seal traps, or all the eagles will gawk. And, and got my children talking about rotten it is and, and rotten it at. Uh huh. Yeah. First thing they need to do is get themselves some education instead of bopping around talking about groovy people, groovy dogs, groovy people, groovy chumps. That's what I say. Now you either you either listen to my music and like it or y'all can go to your room. Well go, just go, go to your room. Go, get out of here. Shucks. Wait a minute, wait, you hold up. What is this? Get out of here. Like a lot of people, I originally liked the Rodneys. I thought they were harmless fun. But after receiving complaints from Mr. Dobbin, well, I realized my nagging doubts were justified. I mean, look at their hair. Our children simply don't grow it that way. And the music, it's totally Eurocentric. After I came to this realization, I pressured the school board into getting rid of this dangerous music. Our African-American young children simply don't behave this way. Repressing their self-expression, it's not in their nature. Well, they're used to moving their arms this way and that way while dancing, opening up like a flower, and freeing themselves from the shackles of this European male-dominated society. When you hold your arms stiffly at the side, as in the penguin walk, well, you're shutting down the left hemisphere of your brain. It's the creative side. I have a master's in sociology, so I know these things. And that's why I took it upon myself to put an end to these shows and help the Dobbinses over the school, well, to put a little sanity to their households. I mean, after all, why should our children listen to the Rodneys when they have much more positive role models to listen to? Like P. Diddy, an old dirty bastard. 
What's that woman's name again? Miss Waverly? Yeah, well, I got to go see her. Yeah, it's up to me to get rid of the Rodney's, I see. Uh-huh, I got them out my house. Now they're here they're in the school. Well, they coming out of there too. Huh? Yeah, right. I don't get it. I'm supposed to be married in an hour. I came here two weeks ago with four tuxedos that are supposed to be clean and pressed today. Where are they? The ducky squawky, the soaring hawk, the penguin walks like the parrot talks. The ducky squawky, the soaring hawk, the penguin walks like the parrot talks. The, the, the ducky squawky, the soaring hawk, and the penguin walks like this. Down with the Rodney, no more Rodney. Down with the Rodneys, no more Rodneys. I said to get rid of the Rodneys and we gonna do it. No more Rodneys, no more Rodneys, no more Rodneys, kill no Rodneys. The negative influence of the Rodneys cannot be understated. The question becomes whether our children can exist in a system dominated by the culture of white European males. That's the reason I canceled their contract. I want no more to do with them. Why is he in charge? He has the biggest mouth. You gonna listen to them Jackie Wilson 45s up there and you gonna like it too. You understand me? I want it on record what happened. Sweet Bailey, the guy who did this to us, I think he was upset about the fact that we had the better act. He took it personally and he bitch slapped Lewis. I'm just praying that we don't have to saw him open. It's going to be expensive anyhow. I need Louis at 100%. I mean, what's Abbott without Costello? What's Laurel without Harding? What's Gooden without Monica? That's the way it was between me and Louis. I can't go on in Atlantic City stage without everything clicking on all cylinders. I mean, I'm the straight man. Who has all the funny lines? We're in deep trouble. And we all know who's responsible. Sweet little dummy. Have you thought about taking legal action? It's bad to sue people in this business. You never know who's going to have power over you. So we'll keep a low profile and we'll let sleeping dogs lie. But if Bailey's had any class, he would pay for Louis' carpenter bills. So we asked Sweet Bailey for comment on the Pablo and Louise incident, and he gave us a typically direct answer. Talking to a band called the Rodneys, they've been creating quite a stir playing around the New York area, especially for the New York City Board of Education. And even the young parents on my staff have agreed that these guys are uh, they're really hip and happening. And they sound uh, very British when you sing. That's the way it be, dog. Yeah, man, we just land them tracks like we know how. Who's really the leader of the band here? That's no question, it's me. No, that's me. Yo, hold up, money. I'm the only one who reads the music up in here. Yeah, well, without my lyrics, your music wouldn't be worth nothing. Your words don't mean jack if I didn't show you the chords. All right, now about your hair. Is that really yours? Damn straight it is. It is straight. Yeah, we bought it, so we own it. So you guys don't dress this way in the neighborhood, do you? Oh, no, hell no, man. We'll get beat down. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah, Sweet is your manager here, yeah. is that right? Yeah, that's Sweet. Sweet, can you get near a microphone? Because uh, it is radio. we got to be able to hear your voice. Do you talk at all, Sweet? Hello? Here. You do? I'm here. Yeah, can you get near a mic? we, we got to be able to hear you. Get a little sound there. Yeah. Right Hi, here. Sweet. How are you? Fine. How are you doing? I'm doing great. No. Uh, where do you live? 
Well, I'm, uh, I live in Brooklyn. You live in Brooklyn? I live in Brooklyn. Yeah. I You're just not, got out of the military. You just got out of the yeah, military. You were a little too old to have just gotten out of the military. What are you, like a... I'm a lifer. A lifer. <laughs> I, I understand that. The Rodneys, uh, whom you manage, right? That's correct. So you made a career move. You spent 30 years in the Marine Corps, and now you're going to take these four yutzes and make them something. We're going to take a little break here because we have to play commercials. We still do this for a living here. I can't imagine looking at a guy that spent 30 years in the <laughs> Marine Corps. <laughs> he comes out and wants to be in show business. What a career move that is. You should have done it the other way around. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. Joy Reynolds Show live from New York. All right. All right. I am sitting and talking with an absolute legend in the music business, Mr. Sid Bernstein. Back in 1964, Sid brought a group of mop tops to America for the very first time when he brought the Beatles to Carnegie Hall. And again, in 1965, when he brought the Beatles back for the second time. Only this time, it was the Beatles at Shea Stadium. Sid, tell us about the Rodney. I want to go back to Carnegie Hall. I want to hit one more home run in that ball field, Carnegie Hall. It better be the Rodney's without without mistakes that the management made and without the mistake that they're making. While Sid Bernstein might have been right about the Rodney's need to expand their audience, they did manage to maintain their ubiquitous following. We love the Rodney's! I'm sitting and talking with that respected record executive, Chris Ellis. 
As you probably know, he was formerly the hell-raising and flamboyant lead singer of that 60s pop group, The Cleggs. Their sexy and psychedelic hit single, Wild Party Groovy Loving, made the top of the charts, both in the UK and right here in America. So good to speak to you, Chris. No problem, mate. Listen, I just wanted to talk to you for a bit about the Rodneys. Now, I know you've heard of them. You're right. Yeah, well, how is it that you first heard about the Rodneys? I got a little girl named Ellie, a 10-year-old she is. She played those Rodney blokes for me and said it was a new sound that was being played around her school. Of course, I couldn't believe my bloody ears. Right there for the whole world to hear was some band out of Bushwick or wherever the hell they're from, stealing our British music. Wait a minute, what do you mean stealing? Just what I says, mate, stealing. I'm listening to a Rodney song called Come On AA and I'm thinking to myself, hold on a minute, that's right out of the psychedelic 60s textbook. So I looked at the label on the tape and I find the Rodney's names on it, but they weren't giving credit to anyone else. Well, they did credit the producers and the writers. That ain't what I mean, mate. I'm talking about the inspiration behind the music. The chaps over in England what gave the Rodneys their sound. Yeah, like who, for instance? Exactly. <laughs> hey, Chris, get a little excited, a little upset about all this. I just don't like people nicking our music without giving us credit. We Brits, after all, invented rock and roll in the 60s. So it's only fair that our lads get some credit for creating the sound what gave joy to an entire generation. Hey, wait a minute. You invented rock and roll, huh? What, what about Little Richard? What about Chuck Berry? What about Bo Diddley? Who? Not the who. Little Richard, Chuck Berry, Bo Diddley, the inventors in the 1950s of rock and roll, mate. Oh, those guys. But I thought they came out of Newcastle. You have these uh, songs that go in like uh, groovy people, groovy places in that one? Yes, yes, yes right. Yes, yes, yes. And then there's something at the end of that song that says, uh, uh, everybody smoke crack. Is that is that right in the background of the song? I don't know anything about that. You got to talk to Rodney. Which Rodney? I said Rodney is you, Def. Oh, you're a Rodney. How many Rodneys we got here? Rodney? <laughs> Yo, you don't put that on me. Yeah. If it's anybody, it's Rodney. Oh, Rodney. Nah, man, you got to get out of here with that, son. Don't be blaming Rodney when you know doggone well that it was Rodney that was in the studio that night. I'm trying to cover up for Rodney, it was Rodney. Yeah, but me and Rodney was in the mall shopping that day when Rodney was in the studio. Yeah, but who was he with? Rodney. Rodney! If one listens to the end of Groovy People, Groovy Places closely. See, they're not saying smoke crack, smoke crack, everybody, smoke crack. They're, they're saying, Smokestack, Smokestack, Helen Reddy's Smokestack. Listen again. See, it's as clear as day and it makes perfect sense because as you probably and well know, Helen Reddy's Chimney was an inspiration to many songwriters, not just Rodney Barnett. Man, we don't believe in smoking nothing. We don't even smoke cigarettes. So the band was being besieged from all over. But if Sweet Bailey's inexperience, a politically correct school board, or even hidden lyrical content couldn't stop them, what did stop the Rodneys? That's a minor. You move your thing over a half step, that's a major. You got it? There's no doubt in my mind that if we took Sid Bernstein's advice, We'd have been big all over the world. But Sweet Belly couldn't punch out the world, unfortunately. So therefore, we were stuck doing them dead in after school gigs. Well, there was also that tension, friction thing between you and Rodney Barnett. You take me. I'm very serious about making my music and practicing to make myself a better musician. You take Rodney, he's into making it with the ladies. There ain't nothing wrong with that, but there's a time and a place for everything. You see, when we stopped playing for adults, Rodney got bored. That's the difference between him and me. For me, I love my music and it's about making my music. For him, it's just another opportunity for Poo Tang. So it was double X chromosomes that precipitated the band's demise. But was it really that simple 
to reduce the character of Rodney Barnett to that of a skirt chaser? One has to realize that at the age of 25, Rodney had never had a serious relationship. And to listen to his lyrics, you can hear a young man's yearning for love and companionship. Fuck this goofy bullshit, son! I ain't get into this for this! I got into this for the freaks, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't seen none of them playing this garbage! Man, just stick to the gig, man. Stick to the gig? The only gig you two need to stick to is what I'm about to do. Yo, Marty, you remember that beat we worked on? Yeah. When I give you the cues, you hit it. Now get out my way. Mama threw daddy out the house. Mama threw daddy out the house. I was talking to fine honeys on my waterbed. When my daddy set a trap and give me some, he said. Close the door, said daddy. Cause you and me is the same. We love some real freak bitches and we share each other's name. Cause mama threw daddy out the house. 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 Damn, mom, huh? it was foul. Did the smart Rodney find the love that he had been looking for his entire life? Right here. And it was here at this very spot that Rodney Barnett met Khalila Cooper. Check out Clerk Par Excellence and his future bride. I didn't like Khalila from the get. She came out of nowhere and took the fun out of the game. I told Rodney, if he wanted to meet a fly sister, he should meet my cousin Sonia. She'd have made a man out of him in like 15 minutes. She'd have had him singing his shit in a falsetto that'd have made Babyface Edmonds out green with envy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Stand falling in love. That's all well and good. When you've got another man's time on your hands, you gotta keep your priorities straight. Okay, okay. So what lies in the future for Rodney York? Rodney York's gonna keep playing his music with whoever. I've got a gig lined up with some jazz musicians, and they got serious chops. Okay, great. But tell me, do you think there's even the slightest chance you'll get back together with the Rodneys? Hell no. 
This is the creme de la creme of my Rodney's mementos. The original wigs worn by the Rodneys. Now, I don't wear these things myself, folks. I just collect Rodney's paraphernalia. I have the original wig of John Rodney. Rodney York, the original wig of Rodney Barnett. Once I get Rodney Modney's wig, my collection will be complete. <laughs> Rodney Sr. and I are ecstatic. Kalila and Rodney are having their first child. So we'll be grandparents. It's so hard for us to believe. Only two more weeks. <laughs> these are pictures of Kalila taken just last week. We're setting up a nursery in Rodney's old room. Well. How about after the baby is born? Do you think Rodney will come to his senses then and, and maybe reunite with his old man? The only music Rodney needs to know is the words to rock a -bye, baby Oh, that's my favorite song from way back. What? Sing it to me, baby, like you used to. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney, you can't have I don't get it. You pop in a cassette. You turn it on, you listen to the music, you say to yourself, this music is going to change the world. And the next thing you know, people go back to the regular jobs as if the Rodneys had never even happened. What was the point of me leaving my job? What was the point of me leaving my family? Why drop out from society when there's nothing beneath you but air? Maybe Sweet Bailey had it right when he said, fuck all you motherfuckers. What did you say before, that you were, you were better than the Beatles? No, 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 I think you misunderstood. What yeah. I said was, we are bigger than the Beatles. That's for sure. See, oh, that's right. as you can plainly see here, my man right here, Rodney, is about 6'4". And then I got oh. the other Rodney over here, that'd be John, and he's about 6'2". I mean, the only one that might be smaller than the Beatles, per se, is probably Rodney, because Ringo was only about 5'10", so I think he might be. So see, as you see, we yes. are bigger than the Beatles. I got it, I got it. Really? And, and by the way, so you know, yeah. we bigger than God, too. One of the things that always bugs me is when you watch a music video and you see all those bands jumping all around, dancing and whatnot, while holding their basses, their, their guitars, and their keyboards. Except the drummer. He has to be in the background behind all those drums. Sometimes you don't even see him. Yeah, that's true. Psh, dig it. So because of that, I invented this. The drum suit. Now, the only problem is the bass drum, which is too big. So, I invented this uh, little mini mic piece so I could play a go sound in my mouth. See, see now I could, uh, I could play on location, I can dance with the ladies, whatever. It gives me, uh, what's the word? Um, Flexibility? Right. Genius. The man is a genius.
so the Rodneys as a group was over. I tried to gain their confidence. I figured I could get them back together if I could only make them realize what their music might one day mean to the world. You're gonna get hurt if you keep messing with me. Fine, my friend, we'll do it without you. But you will be sorry. Just like David Caruso after we left NYPD Blue, huh? You will be sorry! Just like Jane Pauley after she left the Today Show, huh? You will be sorry! Like Bernal Roberts after he left Bonanza! So because of attitudes like that, no more Rodneys, right? But wasn't it John Rodney himself who once said, what the Beatles took, we'll take back? So how inevitable is it that the wheel of fate would turn once again? Ladies and gentlemen, we're pleased, we're proud, we're honored to have the biggest band that Brooklyn has known or seen for the last two decades back from the international world tour. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to the Angelo. <laughs> Wow, keep them away. It must be great to be back here at the Legacy Nightclub after being on the road so long. And we owe it all to you, Joe. Thanks for helping out and having faith in me and the boys. Well, it's your music that everybody's excited about, but I gotta ask you a question. Yeah, sure. You guys sound so differently when you sing. Can, can you explain the difference? Yeah, no problem, Joe. There used to be another band that sounded just like us. So I guess we sort of cop their style. But enough about them, guys. You are the new kids on the block now. So, can you introduce the fellas to us? Yeah, no problem, Joe. This is Robert El Monte on the drums. We got Bobby Katz over here. He's on the bass. And this is Louis Figueroa. He's on the guitar. And then, of course, there's me. And I'm George Fingers Modney. And that's what makes us the Angelos. Ladies and gentlemen, Without further ado, let's hear it for the Angelos. Let's hear it for them. Folks, I'm sitting here talking to my former stockbroker, and now he's a rock and roll manager. I can't even believe it. William D. Koppelmeyer. How did this happen? Well, as you know, Joey, I was a 50-year-old uh, financial advisor stockbroker who had felt that life had passed him by. So one day, I gave up my cushy job, my expense accounts, uh, my penthouse apartment, my Maserati, my 57-inch plasma television, my wife and kid, of course, my house in the Hamptons, and a mistress practiced in the arts of whips and leather. And why? So that I could present to you in America, Joey, my favorite band and my latest discovery. Who was that? Who? Yeah. Sure ain't the Rodneys. <laughs> Coquettish aristocracy, burgeoning democracy, freedom. 